hate relationship with fried chicken and watermelon. So. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have to be a black stereotype? I mean, it's just good food. They're both delicious. We're not the only ones who like it. All right. Right, um, Colleen. <laughs> all right, so we have another new voice that is gracing the roulette stage. And oh, I actually did not get to talk to him very much. I just. You know, he had a ring of, sur of, of admirers, and I just walked up, put my card in his pocket, because men's clothing always has pockets. That's another angst of mine, because we women apparently aren't supposed to have possessions. <laughs> and he contacted me, and I was like, yes, that works. Cause I love the story that he read at uh, Backyard Storytelling, and I knew that it would fit here perfectly. So. Um, he's going, well, I'll just tell you that the name of it is Woodrow's Toe. Please welcome Ken, uh, David Kendall. Woo! Woo! Uh, in my hometown of Cottage Grove, Tennessee, a uh, tiny little dot up here in the northwest corner of the state where nobody ever goes by choice. <laughs> uh, there lived an old man named Ed Cox, and in most ways Mr. Ed was completely unremarkable. He, uh, like many, was a farmer. He uh, drove a school bus part-time. He lived in a little house up in the woods. However, uh, when it came time to tell him a story, he was a genius. He was the Picasso of storytelling. He told fantastic tales that were incredible in the uh, the most literal meaning of that word. Uh, and if you had the nerve to express any kind of disbelief in his stories, he would act surprised and maybe even hurt uh, that you would even raise the specter of mendacity. I'm going to let you judge for yourself. Uh, this is a story that he told to me when I was a kid. And we were sitting on a bench outside the general store. Uh, it's called Woodrow's Toe. It goes like this. My brother Woodrow was famous for two things. He hated to wear shoes, and he had the sharpest axe in the city country. Now one time I saw good Woodrow cut a goat's head off. The goat was standing up. He cut the goat's head off, and the head hit the ground before the goat did. Now early one morning, Daddy got to get Woodrow out of bed before the sun came up. He said, get up, boys, and get ready to work. You're going to be cutting wood today. So me and Woodrow got out of bed, we got our lunch from Mama, we got our tools, Daddy hitched up the mules to the wagon, and we set off into the dark woods. And all the way over there, Woodrow was working on that axe with a file, getting it so sharp you could shave with it. And he wasn't wearing no shoes either. <laughs> About the time the sun came up, Daddy stopped the wagon, he pointed to a tall post oak tree and he said, now there she is, boys, get her down. I'll pick you up this evening. Right before he left, the last thing he did was reach under the wagon seat, take Woodrow's boots and throw them down on the ground. He said, now put them boots on, son. Sharp as that axe of yours is, you make a mislick, you'll cut your foot clean off. And Woodrow didn't like it none, but he know better than to back talk, so he sat down there and put his boots on. Daddy wasn't much worn out of sight till Woodrow sat back down on the ground and took his boots back off again. I said, Woodrow, Daddy finds out you took your boots off when he said not to, he'll be mad at him. He said, well, how's he going to find out? You ain't going to tell him, is you? And he gave me one of these looks. And Woodrow was tough as a pine knot. And I know that because he would whip my ass. I said, no, I'm not going to tell him. We set to work, and we worked hard all day long. And way up in the afternoon, I heard a ping. It rang out through the, loud, uh, through the woods loud as a church bell. It was the sound of an ax hitting a log sideways. I turned around, and also I heard Woodrow let out a yelp. I turned around, and Woodrow was sitting on the ground, had his hands cupped over the end of his foot, blood coming through his hands. 
And I walked over there and I said, Woodrow, what happened? He pointed down, he most it down on the ground. He said, well, that about that's what happened. And I looked down and they lay his big toe, cut clean off, laying on the ground like a big fat grub worm. I said, well, hold on, Woodrow. I'll go get Daddy. We'll get you some help. Before I could leave, he grabbed my pants leg with one of them bloody hands, and he said, oh, no, you ain't going to go tell Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he finds out that I took my boots off. When he said not to, he'll be mad as hell. And I said, well, Woodrow, what do you aim to do? Lay here and bleed to death? He said, well, I've been thinking about it. <laughs> he said, I believe we can just put it back on. <laughs> I said, now Woodrow, we don't know nothing about that. <laughs> we never put on a person's toe before. <laughs> he said, well, we talked on the animals all, over, all the time on the farm. I believe we can do it. I said, we talk about goats, cows, hogs. We don't know nothing about doctrine on people. <laughs> he said, well, you just do what I tell you and it'll be all right. So I did. I picked up his toe and I took my water jug and I rinsed it off good. He said, now when I move my hands, he said, you stick that toe back on the stob at the end of my foot. <laughs> he moved his hands and I stuck his toe back on. He reached around and hold his toe and he said, now grab some of that mud and just pack it around. <laughs> well, our land was this old black Mississippi gumbo mud. It was real thick. <laughs> if you got any on your boots, it would take you half a day to clean it off. But I took up a handful and I started packing it around this toe like a cast. And it looked pretty good. And then I took my handkerchief. And I tied it around his foot to make a sling, and I tied a little knot behind his heel to hold his toe on. And about that time, we heard Daddy coming back through the woods, clicking to the mules and whistling. Woodrow said, hurry up and get them my boots. I don't want Daddy to see me here with my boots off. I gave Woodrow his boots. He tied them on. Daddy pulled up. Woodrow stood up, got his tools, walked to the wagon like nothing ever happened. He kept that boot on for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Never once took it off. One night right before bed, Woodrow said, I've been thinking about my toe lately. <laughs> and I said, well, how do you reckon it is? He said, I don't know, but I'm fixing to find out. <laughs> he sat down on the bed, he untied his boot, he took his boot off, he untied the sling, took the handkerchief off, he knocked off the dried mud. His toe had grown back on perfect. <laughs> there was only one problem. It was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> but you know from then on, that toe never gave him a minute's trouble. Now it is true, that he did sound funny walking across a hardwood floor. <laughs> and from then on, he had, when he wanted to cut his toenail, he had to lay on his belly, curl his foot up on his head, and reach together with the clippers. But other than that, he was fit as a fiddle. <laughs>